listen everybody to the words I have to say Better get ready this is Daniel White the third with the second coming watch update this is update number 563 let's take a quick look at today's prophecy related headlines which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it first today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East. According to The Guardian, an official website belonging to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard has quoted a senior cleric as saying that Iran has attained the knowledge to build a nuclear bomb but doesn't want to use it. The site Ayatollah Ahmad uh, to me as telling a group of IRGC commanders that Iran had the expertise to enrich uranium not just to the 5% and 20% levels required for civilian uses but to higher levels required for a bomb. He said, we can enrich uranium at 5% or 20%, as well as 40% to 50%, and even 90%. Akatomi's speech was widely covered by the Iranian press, but the remarks about Iran's nuclear bomb-making capabilities were not reported. Second, today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East. According to the Times of Israel, the Hamas terror group has been redoubling its efforts to restore the cross-border offensive tunnels that were destroyed by Israel during last summer's war in the Gaza Strip. According to the report, some of the cement and other materials being delivered to the coastal Palestinian territory as part of an international rebuilding effort has been diverted to the tunnels. An Israel radio report said Hamas has realized that the tunnels which were used to stage attacks on Israeli military targets during the war provided with a psychological edge over residents of Israeli border towns in the area. Third today under the sign category of diseases and epidemics according to Reuters the World Health Organization said on Saturday that the death toll from Ebola in the three worst affected countries in West Africa has risen to 7,373 among 19,031 cases known to date. The latest data reflected nearly 500 new deaths from the worst ever outbreak of the fever in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. This week, Sierra Leone's government launched a major operation to contain the epidemic in West Africa's worst hit country. Fourth today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East. According to the Times of Israel, the United States delivered 10 Apache helicopters to Egypt in recent weeks after lifting part of a freeze on aid to the Arab nation. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry had been promising Cairo's new leadership that the aircraft aimed to join counterterrorism operations in the Sinai Peninsula would be delivered soon. The United States 
annually allocates some 1.5 billion in aid to Egypt, including 1.3 billion in military assistance. Egypt's military has been battling an insurgency on the peninsula since it overthrew Islamist President Morsi last year and cracked down on his supporters. Fifth today, under the sign category of distress among nations according to the Washington Free Beacon, Russian strategic bombers conducted a third a circumnavigation of the U.S. Pacific island of Guam last week as other bombers flew close to Alaska and Europe. Two bombers made the flight around Guam, a key U.S. military hub in the western Pacific on December the 13th. No U.S. interceptor jets were dispatched to shadow the bombers. Separately, two Canadian F-18s intercepted two Russian bombers that intruded into the Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone, which a military spokesman called unwanted, provocative, and potentially destabilizing. Around the same time in Europe, NATO jets intercepted Russian bombers also conducting provocative flights. Beloved, you can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. The prophetic passage of scripture we are looking at today is Exodus chapter 12 verses 46 through 47, which reads, In one house shall it be eaten, thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. Allow me to share with you some commentary on this passage from the popular Bible prophecy commentary edited by Dr. Tim LaHaye and Dr. Ed Heinsohn. Exodus chapter 12, verses 46 and 47 provides two more general rules of, of observance. The Passover meal is to be eaten by each household within the confines of each house. There are to be no progressive Passover cedars from home to home, and there is to be no eating of the ritual meal out on the porch or in the backyard. In addition, God prohibited the breaking of any of the lamb's bones. Passover was one of three annual pilgrimage festivals along with Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles. When every Israelite family was commanded to congregate at the central location of worship, initially the tabernacle and later the temple, Passover finds prophetic fulfillment in the death of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The rich uh, typological significance of Passover is highlighted in several places in the New Testament. John uses the imagery of the unblemished, sacrificed lamb to refer to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and worthy is the Lamb, as do both Peter, a lamb unblemished and spotless, and Paul, Christ our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Paul also applies unleavened bread imagery to the believer's lifestyle goal of holiness. In addition, John explicitly alludes to the Passover by pointing out that none of Jesus' bones were broken during his crucifixion. Jesus himself referenced his typological fulfillment of both the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread during the Last Supper. Christ's 
reinterpretation of the Passover meal, instituted the celebration of communion, and announced a new era in human history. Indeed, implicit in the Last Supper teaching is the promise of future celebrations of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread within the Messianic Kingdom. This future observance is confirmed by the prophet Ezekiel. If the Lord tarries his coming, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and we live, we will continue looking at the prophetic passages of the Bible in our next podcast. Our second coming quote for today is from Anthony Ashley Cooper. He said, the only remedy for all this mass of misery is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we not plead for it every time we hear the clock strike? And dear friend, if you are not ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready, get ready, get ready today. Don't hesitate by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Simply believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul, and he will save you. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you.